Hello everyone, I'm Nathan Rostron from Restless Books here in our Brooklyn office uh, on a very cold February day, wishing we were in Winter Institute with all of you. I just want to give a quick recap of what we've been up to and a look ahead to what we have coming up. First of all, 2020, as we know, was a terrible year, um, although it has had some bright spots. Um, right in March, when everything was shutting down, we decided to make the best of the situation by reaching out to dozens of international writers and translators and coming up with an anthology of pandemic responses, which we titled, And We Came Outside and Saw the Stars Again, which is the last line of Dante's Inferno. And I love how that ends on a hopeful note. We were able to donate proceeds to the Book Industry Charitable Foundation. We thought bookstores being shut, we wanted to do something to give back. And we're really hoping that this summer things will start to get back to normal. 2021 is looking like it might be a more normal year than 2020 at any rate. I also wanted to mention a book we published in September, a book I'm very proud of. The Memory Monster by Yishai Sarid. This is an Israeli novel about the very complicated legacy of the Holocaust and how we remember it. Um, that was very controversial in Israel. And it was named to the New York Times 100 Notable Books list. Um, it's very slender, as you can see. If you haven't read it yet, I really recommend you check it out. We'll be publishing the paperback version this spring. And on to a couple books that are publishing right now. First of all, uh, one of my favorite authors we've published at Restless, Giacomo Sartori, who wrote The Wonderful I Am God, which I hope we have somewhere up here. Here it is. This was this uh, wonderful Italian novel that's a diary that God starts to keep when he falls in love with a human. Um, we've kept up with the shiny cover tradition for Sartori. Here is a gold metallic foil cover for his next novel, Bug which is a really wonderful novel narrated by the deaf youngest son of a family that could be out of a Wes Anderson movie. They're kind of misfit genius savants who really have trouble fitting in with society, uh, especially our narrator, who is mostly friendless except for his older brother and the artificial intelligence robot that his brother is building and kind of secretly on the sly without anyone else being aware of it our narrator and Bug, the robot, start to develop a friendship or you might call plans for world domination. I uh, really recommend you check it out. Now I'm going to pass the mic over to my colleagues Allison and Christine, who are going to tell you about some of the books we have coming up in the spring and summer. And then I'll see you back here in a couple minutes. Hi, I'm Allison from Restless Books, and I'm really excited to be talking to all of you in our institute about some of our upcoming 2021 titles. So first up is Catch the Rabbit. This is the powerful debut novel by Yugoslav foreign author Lana Bastisic. Um, I am really excited for this one. Uh, Lana translated the novel from Serbo-Croatian into English herself, and she won the 2020 European Union Prize for Literature for this. Two childhood best friends, Sarah and Layla, reconnect on a road trip through the Balkans after being estranged and not speaking for over a decade. Um, and they confront their very different memories and perceptions of their shared adolescence before, during, and after the Yugoslav War. When Layla's brother, uh, Armin, reappears after nearly 20 years, he'd gone missing during the war. Uh, Layla and Sarah drive from Mostar to Vienna in search of him. But as they're traveling along through the Balkan hinterlands, they're also forced to navigate the equally and perhaps even more so <laughs> treacherous terrain of their past as they get closer to Vienna and to confronting uh, Armin. Um, this is a deep probing meditation on friendship and the intricacies of a relationship between two people who are perpetually caught on the opposite sides of the looking glass. Uh, we do have print galleys for this one. It's out in June. We're going to be publishing it in a simultaneous publication with Picador UK. Um, so, yeah. Next up is the middle grade novel Temple Alley Summer by renowned Japanese children's author Sachiko Kashiwaba, translated into English by Avery Fisher Udagawa and featuring black and white illustrations by Miho Sataki. This is a really fun mystery adventure novel with a supernatural twist, uh, but it's also a powerful narrative about friendship, loyalty, and curiosity. 
Ten-year-old Katsu is ready for a boring, predictable summer when his plans are completely turned upside down by two very big mysteries. Uh, first, there's the sudden appearance of a young girl named Akari and her ghost mom next door. Then he discovers that his house is built in the exact location of the ancient Kimyo temple, which, legend has it, had the power to bring the dead back to life. Katsu sets out to get to the bottom of these two mysteries and quickly realizes that Akari's sudden appearance has to be linked to the ancient temple. The two end up joining forces to find and protect the temple's power, even as all the adults in town conspire to stop them from finding the truth. Um, one of my favorite things about Temple Alley Summer is that it's told in two separate narratives and the illustration style is completely different, whether you're in the main narrative or the meta story. Um, so just to give you a quick sneak peek, so here's some of the illustrations from the main story. And then when you get into the sort of secondary narrative, the style is drastically different. So it helps sort of situate where you are in the book. Um, and the illustrations are also just incredible. Hi, my name is Christine Pardue. I'm an assistant editor at Restless, and I'm really excited to share with you our next picture book that we have coming out um, this spring. It's called Good Night Earth by Linda Bondestam. Um, translated from the Swedish by Galit Hassan Rokem. Um, Linda Bonestam is a really wonderful Finnish illustrator, and this is her first book um, that she is the author of, as well as the illustrator for. Um, it's a super charming twist on a classic bedtime story um, starring an alien family on a faraway planet um, who is um, watching the bedtime routines um, and travails of all kinds of creatures here on planet Earth. So they have a very cute, tiny little telescope that they look down on planet Earth with, and we see, you know, like um, a meerkat family on the savanna doing bedtime yoga. Um, we get to spy on a sweet little oxalato, the cutest little creature, um, reading his favorite book before bed. And of course, his favorite book is a tiny edition of Good Night Earth. Um, there's a Kiwi dad, a, a long-suffering Kiwi dad, who is struggling um, to get his little brood of baby Kiwis to go to sleep. Um, yeah, and the pages are die cut, so as you're turning the pages, it's like you're tucking the animals into bed. Um, the art is just gorgeous. That's, that's what we fell in love with. Um, it's full of, um, you know, expressiveness and um, wonderful color, bright, vibrant colors and... Um, and sly humor. It's very much like a kid-friendly version of the book um, Go the F to Sleep, um, if you can imagine that, um, but also illustrated by a brilliant Scandinavian illustrator, and that's Linda. She's kind of a, a rising star in the Scandinavian kids' book world. Um, so, yeah, we're a, a huge fan of this book. We've all sort of fallen in love with it, and we can't wait to share it with, with um, English reading audiences. So. We hope you'll check it out on Edelweiss. All of the illustrations are up there. And we would love to send you a finished copy as soon as we have those ready. Um, so if you'd like to receive one, please get in touch. And that's it for me. Thank you for watching. And I'm going to send you back over to Nathan. All right, and I'm back. I just wanted to talk about one more book from our summer list, which is Anti-Man by Rajiv Mohabir. It won our Restless Books Prize for New Immigrant Writing in the nonfiction category. Rajiv has written this memoir, which, as you can see from paging through this galley, you know, it starts off, you think it's an ordinary prose memoir, but by, toward the end of the book, it starts to break down into poetry and song. Uh, Rajiv grew up in central Florida in a family of Guyanese Indian immigrants. His ancestors were indentured laborers, laborers on British sugarcane plantations in the Caribbean um, who were originally brought from India. And Rajiv has always searched for his roots um, within a family and within a community that was not always welcoming to that search. His journey begins sitting at the feet of his grandmother who sings these wonderful, uh, what he calls Caribbean Bhojpuri 
songs, um, kind of in her own Creole dialect, her own uh, version of Hindi that she grew up speaking in Guyana. Now she's in Toronto, you know, can't imagine a more di different climate, uh, a more different social climate um, where his grandmother is stuck. She can't read or write. She can only communicate through these songs. And Rajiv decides to learn her songs, learn her languages. He moves to India. Um, he studies the music, studies the language, and returns to the U.S. wanting to more fully embrace his identity. And part of that includes embracing his queer identity, which he has kept a closely guarded secret because in his community, um, gay men are known as anti-man, which is a horrible slur for queers um, in the Caribbean. And he has decided to reclaim that phrase uh, by owning it, by singing it, uh, by, you know, kind of transforming it into poetry and music. And it is such a welcoming, big hearted, gripping story. Um, I just love it. It's coming out in June and I hope you'll check it out. All right, everyone, uh, that's it from us. Uh, please be in touch. Uh, my email is Nathan at restlessbooks.org. We're happy to send you any of these books or galleys. Anything you see on these shelves that I have at least more than one copy of, I'm happy to send as well. Um, so hit me up, and I hope we can see each other in person soon. Thanks.